this is New Vision TV News. These are our top stories. Bobby Wine and co-accused committed to the High Court as more counts are added on to their case. Mbale defilers are now targeting girls with hearing impairments. Buganda Kingdom is former first Deputy Prime Minister Godfrey Kayakavma Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> and in the news around East Africa, race replaced the late Kibra MP on. In the news around the world, Pakistani lawmakers in India to discuss Kashmir region. And in our special report today, the new coffee bill is tabled. How relevant is it to the farmers? Farming journalist Joshua Keto, who has covered the sector for 10 years, explains. This is New Vision TV News. We broadcast from the New Vision Newsroom. I am Ruth Inasaji. We start off with the news around Uganda from Gulu District. Chadundu East, a member of parliament, Robert Chagulany alias Bobby Wine and 32 Arua treason suspects have been committed to the High Court for trial. Meanwhile, the state has amended charges against them, adding five more counts to make them seven in total in the ongoing trial in the Gulu Chief Magistrate's Court. We move on to Mbale District. Authorities are battling early child marriages and pregnancies among girls with hearing impairments, which they say has significantly contributed to the high school dropout rate. About 45% of girls with hearing impairment dropped out of school in Mbale District in 2018 due to early marriages and teenage pregnancies. That is according to the study from Education and Community Department. Coming in still from Gulu District, five applicants who turned up for the police constable recruitment in Aswa River region were arrested over alleged forging of documents. The five applicants were arrested from Omora, Kitgum and Padel in the police recruitment that was carried out countrywide recently. Patrick Jimmy Okema, the Aswa River region police spokesperson, said in Omora District they arrested two applicants. He said in Kitgum, they arrested William O'Court, who hailed from Agago, but went to be recruited in Kitgum with forged documents, and Alfred Tolit, a resident of Ayul Subward in Pagel Parish. Kit Gumun's piety for forging marks on his senior fault certificate. He said all the suspects were arrested and detained at their respective central police stations in their districts. Their files are being prepared as they will be taken to court on forgery. Okema said many applicants who turned up for the recruitment missed because some of them were overaged, overqualified with the academic documents for senior six diplomas, craft in technical school and degrees among others. Coming in from Wakiso District, a former first Buganda Kingdom Deputy Katikiro Godfrey Kayakavma has been buried at his ancestral home in Jungo Bukwea village in Wakiso District. Kavma died last week on July 28th, but his burial was postponed due to the planned 26th Kabaka coronation anniversary that was slated for July 31st. <laughs> Coming in from Masaka a District, local government ministry has dispatched a team to meet Masaka Kalungu and Rango district leaders over the conflicting views regarding the boundary concerns for Masaka City annexation. New Vision TV has learned that members of parliament hailing from Masaka region, district leaders and Mengo government convened in a closed door meeting at Bro 
Rovard Hotel in Masaka Town to harmonize the situation. The team that comprises of commissioners from the local government ministry and other technocrats will convene a stakeholders meeting tomorrow at Masaka District Headquarters. According to Masaka Municipality Town Clerk John Bohagana, the commissioners will harmonize the two conflicting positions regarding the boundaries. Masaka District Council Chairperson Judy Mbabali confirmed, saying they concluded the neighboring areas from Rengo and Kalungu districts and they failed to provide resolutions to back annexation. Coming in from Mbara District, the rift between embattled Professor Oboa Celestine and his academic staff of Mbara University of Science and Technology continues to deepen as the latter reject the former's reappointment and vote to seek legal redress in courts of law. In a letter dated July 29th addressed to the new chairperson Most Council, Warren Namara, the staff rejected the reappointment of Obua as a vice chancellor. Professor Obua was reappointed to the post less than two weeks ago and he announced his reappointment at the Senate meeting on July 25th, 2019. Julia Stalimwa, the General Secretary of Mast, said they will not bow down until sanity is restored at Mbara University. Closing off the news around Uganda is a story from Buyenda district where Busoga annual tourism event where thousands of foreign and local tourists throng the Kagulu Hill climbing challenge in Buyenda district is back. The guest climber is Miss World Africa Queen Abenacho. Abenacho will be climbing Kagulu Hill for the second time. She was in the area two weeks ago with Miss World Vanessa Pons. The event is slated for August 17th. The 3,848 feet hill was commissioned in 2012 by President Jeremy Seveni, who referred to it as one of the nation's must go tourist destinations in Uganda. The Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga, stated that the event will feature competitors from different parts of Uganda and foreigners who own prizes like motorcycles, iron sheets, mattresses, bed sheets, paint, kerosene, among others. We now take a look at the news around the East African region. We start off from Kenya as the battle to have the wife of the late Kibra MP, Ken Okot, return to Homer Bay to fulfill riches in accordance with the Lua culture hangs in balance. The rest to replace him in the constituency is Orna. By Monday evening, seven had been mentioned as likely candidates in the contest for Kibura seat. Ken Okoth's young brother, Imran Okoth, has emerged as the front winner. Also, Raila's former AD, Eliod Owaru, who unsuccessfully challenged the Okoth for the ODM nomination in the last election, is said to be vying. Okoth's family has asked Kenya's opposition leader, Raila Odinga, to prevail and have a member of the family succeed MP Okoth. Meanwhile, Lua leaders want the late MP's wife, Monica Okoth, inherited by either Okoth's brother or any other male relative in accordance with the Lua culture. Okoth succumbed to colorectal cancer last week. Moving on to Burundi, malaria has killed more than 1,800 people this year. The UN's humanitarian agency says a death or rivaling a deadly Ebola outbreak in the neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. In its latest situation report, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs said 5.7 million cases of malaria have been recorded in Burundi in 2019, a figure roughly equal to half its entire population. Of those cases, a total of 1,801 died from the mosquito bone disease in Burundi between January 1st to July 21st, Ocha said. 
Closing off the news around East Africa is a story from Southeast Sudan. Juba University community is concerned by the university administration and police's silence about yesterday's shooting on the campus. The shooting in which one student was critically injured has shaken the community and raised security concerns. The university has been a safe place in the conflict ridden capital, but this is now in the doubt after a gunman stormed one of the campus hostels and fatally shot Mary Agao, a fourth-year economics student. She took one bullet in the stomach and another ripped through her leg. Agao is said to be in critical condition in Juba Hospital. No arrest has been made. We move on to news around the world. We start from the Democratic Republic of Congo, where 11 people have drowned and dozens are missing after a barge sank on a river in Central Democratic Republic of Congo, authorities said Tuesday. 16 people survived the accident on the overcrowded vessel by swimming to safety on the Lukea River. A journalist working for a local community radio told AFP. Still in a DRC, two people were killed and 24 remain missing after a militia attack overnight on a town in the volatile east of the DR Congo, local sources said Tuesday. The silence killed two transport workers, torched a goods truck and looted at least seven kiosks in the town of Kisima. Noela Kotongeraki, the president of a region civil society group, told AFP. Katongeraki, based in the flashpoint town of Beni, the North Kivu region, say the attackers came from the direction of the Varanga National Park, famous for its mountain gorillas. News from Mozambique. The construction of a multi-billion dollar liquefied natural gas project offshore started Monday. It is operated by the U.S. energy giant Anadarko on the country's remote northern coast. President Felipe Nusi laid the foundation stone in Palma in the Cabo Delgado province, hailing the $25 billion Ravuma Benson LNG project. News from Egypt. Attorney General Nabil Sadiq has assigned South Cairo prosecution to pursue investigations into a deadly malt vehicle crash that hit Central Cairo, let Sunday leaving 19 killed and 30 injured. The Attorney General ordered a team of prosecutors to head to the crash site that took place near the Cairo University affiliated National Cancer Institute in Kara Al Any area in Giza. And to carry out required examination to stand on the causes of the accident. News from India. It was quiet in Juma and Kashmir Tuesday morning, a day after India government revoked their special status and proposed two union territories. Kashmir is a tribal region and has got India and Pakistan at headlocks. It is also the most militarized region in the world. It is feared any unilateral decision over the management of the region could trigger a war between the two Asian states. Pakistan has expressed expressed concern about India's decision. Local politicians and elites in Jammu and Kashmir, both predominantly Muslim, have accused the BGP ruling party of a drive to Hindunize India. During the recent election, BGP had the removal of the special status of the two areas on its agenda. We close off the news around the world from China. Hong Kong police on Tuesday said 148 people were arrested during running battles with protesters the day before the largest daily toll since huge pro-democracy protests kicked off two months ago. On Monday, Hong Kong buckled under a general strike, followed by the most widespread and sustained clashes so far with tear gas fired at more than a dozen locations against increasingly violent hardcore protesters. According to the China Daily, Kari Lam Cheng, Hong Kong's chief executive, said protesters' acts of disruption and pushing our city, the city we all love and many, 
helped to build to the verge of a dangerous situation. She pledged a result action to maintain law and order and restore confidence after the city was brought to a standstill by protesters blocking train services and the road traffic. That is it for the news around the world. We now take a short break, but when we come back, we'll take a look at the news in business.